Hi, I'm Ali Al Karim, and uh, now I'm going to show you my Just Food project, which is an open source uh, post management system, uh, and which is in the process of developing, not finished yet. So it is going to help you uh, to learn about the user uh, role management system in SPNet and membership management system. So I'm going to uh, go pretty quick because I'm I'm assuming that you have already have knowledge on uh, SP dot MVC. Entity framework and databases, relational databases, and everything in place. I know that you were, you know everything, but you don't know the role management system. So this is the right place that you should start from, and you you are going to learn about the role management system in very short time, maybe in 20 minutes or in 10 minutes. So it's not going to be a formal video. So I'm going to be very quick. So let's move on. Uh, Let's see here, I have my database in place. I have this database called just for DV, and I have another database that has been generated by SP.NET role management and membership management system, just, just for hyphen SPNet. So uh, how it is generated and um, by which name it will be generated, you can actually modify it. It is uh, given and written in the web.config file, is the default config. And here I have specified that it should be named as just for db hyphen spnet. So if you are using that universal uh, membership management system, universal role management system or membership management system, so it is going to create the database and link it with the SQL Express or whatever database you have in place. So. Uh, you are not going to see the database in place like that. You are, uh, you might have seen the database in your SQL Server management tool. But either way, you are going to get the database that I am, ha I have here, uh, that generated database. So how it is going to be created? When you created a project, it is not going to be there. So I have it in place. So when you are going to register a user, a, sa a sample user, or it might be uh, something like that in ASP.NET configuration. If you go and uh, move back and forth and uh, do some security management system, it will create then or wh whenever the database is needed, it will be created. So that's the thing. So until it is needed, it will not be there. So when you are accessing or putting some data into that database, so but the information is. Uh, Safe. The information is the for the profiling. There is the profiling information about the default provider. You can actually choose the provider. Here I am using the universal provider, which is already given out of the box with SP dot and MVC four. So with MVC three, there is a different management system, uh, and SP dot net there is a different management system. Different, uh, not the different. The accessing capabilities are uh, actually same. What is different with the database, but you don't have to look at the database because you are going to get get the data from uh, the C sharp code, so you don't have to worry about the database and the uh, structure of the database. So uh, let me give you an information about the database. There are a uh, few tables, and the first table you are going to should you should be looking at that application. Application have the application name what is defen defined in your web.config if you go there you, you will see that there is application name defined so whatever application name you are defining will be uh, saved in this table and with this inf application ID that every other table is going to be linked so whatever user you are creating the user will be in saved in this table and with this application ID and the additional information about this user will be saved in this table. So this is done because for the uh, efficiency of searching and the relationship with uh, user roles and user and user roles are defined in the users in role table. But you don't have to go through these tables. These are uh, primary foreign key relationships and these are all handled or uh, can be get by the abstraction layer of membership provider so you don't have to worry about this and these are the basic concept that what is going to save in the database but uh, 
obviously you will have your custom database so I'm going to do is uh, make you sync with this database and this database here I have a user table this is actually totally custom and I have given the user information extraordinary information that what I need in my context so you can do as your own so there is actually another option called uh, the profiling you can do it by profiling but I think the profiling is kind of bizarre and I feel this way more comfortable but uh, I will make a video on profiling later but uh, here I'm going to show you how to sync your customer customized data with uh, the sp.net generated database so uh, this is the basic concept that's what you are getting so how to access the user it's pretty easy as I guess so I have ran my application I have modified it uh, based on my purpose so this is the registration uh, form you can say so it will be different in SP net SP not net MVC and mobile it will be different in outlooking but the uh, basic uh, fields are same uh, here I have added an additional field so that you can understand how to add and communicate with uh, additional fields and so on so when you click the register button if all goes correct what it does is it goes to this method or action you can say so I'm going to show you the codes that is given and uh, I'm going to highlight those and the other ones I have made and customized so this one is given so this checks the model if it is valid with the context that username or uh, email or everything is place, everything in place and everything is in appropriate format so this this is what it does so next thing what it did is get this and create the user and get the user information da 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 you can see so the last thing it does is out the reference information with the create a status so here it is shaking that the status is really successful so it has created the user in this table so in this table I would like to show some of the feature like the username information username is the info username that you have given up here so whatever you give here I'm going to save that same exact username in my log name so I keep it always at as the log name but you can keep it as uh, you like it would be log it could be anything that you like so keep information that is same as here username and in your table that you are referring so that you can go back and forth and communicate with it so first thing what I'm doing is I'm getting the information from the register model register model is defined in models so if I go to the models models folder I'll have the account models so here I will have the registration model log more login model forget password many of the models so these are not related to any of these databases you might be amazed that this doesn't have to do with anything with these databases so what we are doing we are just making a definition that our model will be like this or that so that that when the HTML has been passed through a HTTP request it will parse everything in my model so what happens is if I don't have this I don't have this per se I don't have this Let's say there will be a lot of errors but let's say I don't have this so how can I get my uh, uh, form information that has been sent to this method or that action so if I go to the register my register view you can see that there is a form defined if you don't know anything about the form you should go w3c and check out how HTML forms works so HTML forms is basically with the URL that where the request has been sent and of when the request has been sent uh, if I inspect this information you'll see that there is a form that 
there is a form and there is action that it is going to send my information to that form action. So in that case, this is the uh, account slash register and the form method would be post. So I could say form method could be get, get will be uh, send everything in my URL. So this would be, wouldn't be very nice. So post is very good. So what, what it does when you have a form in place that it takes all the information of inputs in your form, inputs, only the inputs with the name and make it an array. So if I want to get any information from this input, so it might have a name. So here the name is email. So if I don't have that model, so how can I access to that information? It would be very uh, simple. It would be just like that, email. And I could catch that as email. So I have to do back and forth for every information. So what SP.NET MVC does is gives us the, the first value as a model. So when we have a model in place like that, so it checks that if the name in here matches is any property with this name in here. So if those two are same, the information from that form will be parsed into that model. So this is how the model has been generated with the information. So if you have extra fill in here and you don't have it in here, so it is not going to give the information uh, in your field, but if your field is required in, in the context, that means it will give an error in the model validation. So make sure that if you have a required field, you make sure to put it in here as well. Uh, and another thing, if you have extra fields in there, it doesn't mind, it will uh, take the only fields that is required in the model uh, and parse them through. So this is the model concept. So if you know this far, you, we are good to go. So here when uh, the model is validated, that means user what have put it in there is valid. So I have put it an extra uh, column, that code, and give it some validation rules. So it passed those validation rules. And I'm checking with my database with the entity framework. So I have uh, asked at the first time that you might already know about the entity framework. If you don't know about entity framework, I have a video on it. So look for it. Yeah, it will help you. So uh, here I'm getting the code. So if it is null, then that means there is a problem in the model. So make the model error add the error with the model and then send it back. So if I don't have error, the code is valid, then I'm good to go. I'm creating and checking some other validation rules. You, you should not do uh, like this. You can do it uh, making uh, some class validation. But uh, here I'm making just the quick demonstration that how you should work with it. And here I'm creating my class. And this user is the user from this context. So I know that you know entity framework, entity model, so I don't have to go through this, how the entity model works. So here I am getting the user from this given information in the model. Uh, check out that this model and model are same. I'm getting the user name information to my log name, as I said before, and dot, 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 blah, blah, blah. And then I'm going to save the information to my database. So that's how the role management works. Uh, sorry, membership management works. So you might need a role, role, role management system. So role, roles, are, roles can be accessed like this, roles dot, uh, as you can see that I have already uh, dropped down those methods. So if you want to add a role, add role, so be create role, create role and I can say anything. So here what I'm doing is I am uh, checking the roles based on my area. So I have the area up in here, area admin and cell. So I have these roles in my SPNet DV. Oh, sorry. So I have these roles. So 
whatever area I have here, I have the area main row in there as well. So what I'm doing is I have made a class role manage so you can have the information of roles to add the roles or something like that that I have a priority role in there uh, user role so these are the list of roles with the priority priority zero is mean the highest role priority one means less than one so it is going to be the bottom up manner so bottom would be zero the admin will be on the top so whatever role I'm defined if, if a user is defined with the admin role that means he will get the sales roles as well so he can access to sales as well so everything is defined in this manager context so I'm going to show you that how you can check those in short so roles dot if you want to add a role to the user so this would be the way so first you should write the username here it would be this and then you should write the role name that you are looking for here I'm getting the salesman salesman is a constant string in my role name uh, uh, struct so you can create this is not fancy something uh, this is not anything fancy but the simplest uh, struct with some static values and getting the same role and you can pass the role here and that would be it you can you can add the role to the user so if that role is already exists to the user then it will give you an error so in that class I have solved those errors so you can have all the information for the roles in here so you can uh, create role delete role you can add role add multiple roles you can check is user in role this is very useful right I use it very often so if that is the current user you are checking then you can just say admin that means that if the current logged in user is in this admin role so if you want to check some user with that would be like this so the username name with the role that you are want, you want to check this would be like this so all different information are available in the roles uh, roles context so if you want anything about the membership uh, I meant the user information from this database so what you can do is go to the membership membership and say the get user get will a get user will give you the current user but if you want to check other parameters you can see the parameters are available here you can give the user name to check that if the user exists in the table if that exists then it will give you the user of that table so with that information you can do anything you want you can also change the password sorry reset password um, sorry generate password generate password so if you want to reset a password the information should be generated password and uh, you can catch that generated password in a var gen pass and then send this to user by email so this would be a great thing so you get everything out of the box from the membership uh, and to communicate with these and these you have to keep one information from this table this table username in the custom database that you are building that's it so what I've done is I made a very useful information with those uh, uh, methods in mind that user query that have everything that you need to query on a user and it is very optimized sometimes it gives the information on the session so that you don't have to query the user all the time uh, from the database and if it is in the session that give you the user write it back so everything is said so another thing that how you can check in a context that user is exist user is logged in so it is very simple if you are in a controller what you going to do is identity dot is authenticated so it will return a boolean which specifies that if a user uh, if any user is currently authenticated if it is authenticated if it passes some certain rules you can check after that uh, and 
to check the rules, you can go to the roles and say, uh, let's say the roles and dot dot is in role, and you can say that username if the user in this role, then you can do something, something, something. This returns a boolean, so you can uh, do something, something. So this is the concept for pure concept. So uh, what I've done is sp.net, you can use the filters. Filters are going to be registered at the boot up time of the application. So here it is going to run uh, on the uh, filter config. So you can add as much, as many as filter as you want. So I have the area authentication filter, which is a very much, um, I think, dry because I don't uh, write to write many codes and I have keeping everything in place as you can see that uh, current area is can be get by this definition and after that um, I'm filtering out that if there is any authentication error I'm keeping that session name in the session because uh, I could give the user information with, from the session that the user uh, is not valid for this area or that so how I'm going to check the area, if the area is empty, then I'm going to return that it passes the test, I don't have to care anything. And if it doesn't, an empty area, so that means it's an area, if it is an area, then uh, uh, we are going to check that if it is a restricted area. So I have a restricted area list, so if it is a restricted area, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to check the user is authenticated, as I've said before that is authenticated gives you the information if user is logged in so if the user is logged in then I'm going to check that if the user is in row so if the user is not in row it is going to be the base authentication uh, problem and it is going to rule out to the login page redirect you to the login page so this is how you can make things dry and can reuse those techniques. And I think I'm done here. So if you have any more question, you can mail me. So another things I have been asked, asked by a few users that um, how you can add uh, more multiple uh, creating user creating steps. And it is uh, very easy to create those user steps. steps. So uh, when I have done these in my controller in the register method what I can do is rather than returning to the index controller I could uh, return it to the next process and uh, you might need the uh, information from this table or this action to the passing uh, context uh, sorry passing action so what you can do, you can use the viewback. Viewback is a dynamic property in C sharp. So if you don't know dynamic property, you are fine because you don't have to know it so far. Uh, in a dynamic property, you can just say anything dot dot dot. Uh, the compiler wouldn't notice what you are typing and it will compile just fine. So you are okay as long as you are passing something like that and then catching with it at the same phrase. So I could write like this user and here I have passed the user uh, previously uh, so you can get the user in this new process action result Sorry. so you can say that if view back dot user not now not now then do something like like that so you can access to the database you can uh, generate a new you can generate a new uh, uh, view from this context and then receive it from another HTTP request if you can pass through this uh, action you can pass through another as well so you can uh, make the drop downs here and receive the information and save it to your custom database and so on. So if, if you have multiple process, uh, I think you should use the session. Session would be the better thing to do. 
So if you don't know about sessions, session are uh, the things like cookies, but it's not exactly cookies. Session is more safe. So session is something saved in the, in the server side, not in the client side, but client side has a simple cookie of information of that session that the session is uh, saved in, uh, sorry, I messed up. Uh, the, for a session, uh, client have a cookie of ID of that session and server had the same ID of that session and the both communicate and give the information back and forth and session is more safe because it is server side, it is not going to save on the client side and uh, another thing about the session if it is the data you are keeping is very large it is going to crash somehow so make sure you optimized it for every reason and uh, not saving everything in the session and uh, use cookies when you need them and use session when you need them use viewback viewback is only possible when you are moving from one uh, uh, action to another so I don't think that uh, sorry uh, I have shown the viewback but I don't think the viewback will going to work on this place because you are going to redirect from one action to another viewback is not going to work in this way viewback is only going to work when you are going to uh, send the action from uh, this context to a view so so it will work so if I have a view bag dot info equals something something I can receive that view bag dot info in my view but I cannot uh, access that view bag info in uh, the another uh, index or anything so it will not keep that long so VWAG is safe, VWAG is pretty optimized and it will keep only for uh, one view at a time. It will not keep for multiple. So if you are going to use the multiple session or information, I, sh I should recommend you to use the sessions. Sessions are very easy. If you don't know session, oh, I forget to show you. Sessions are very easy. Say S1, keep the information of user, that's it. And how you are going to retrieve the session? We're going to check that not now, uh, or you can actually check user equals user, user from the session. So if the user is not now, do something like that. So this is the way that you should work. And thanks, I'm Alimul Karim. You can Google me if you want. And uh, I think it helps. If it doesn't, mail me. Uh, my mail address is on my blog. Uh, try to reach me. I will help you as much as I can. Thank you.